Verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Father, we are grateful and we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for all the beautiful songs that's been done. We know, God, that you speak to us through all kind of ways. Through signing, through singing, through the spoken word, through prayer. You just speak to your people if they're just willing to hear. So I pray tonight that we'll continue to listen and that God will let your word speak to our hearts tonight as we look at your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Several years ago, I don't know how many it was, they had one of those reality programs on TV called uh, Temptation Island. Um, I never saw it. I knew about it, but I didn't, I didn't care to watch it. But the idea was that you take a man and woman that are happily married, separate them, put them on this island. With a, if it's a man, put him out there with a bunch of beautiful girls. If it's a lady, put her out there with a bunch of handsome men. And they stay there for a certain length of time to see if the men or the women can tempt them to sin, to give in. And that's really a great program, isn't it? About as good as swapping, lot, swapping wives. I've never seen that one, but that's got to be a good one. Our TV's full of junk. But you see, they, they, they do this, and the idea is that that one person, whether it's a woman or the man, is to be tempted so hard and so strong. And those other people that are there, they're willing to do whatever. They don't care. To see if they can remain true to one another. And I think that's, that is such a crude way to test your faith in your mate. Temptation Island. I think I'd have come up with a lot better name than that if I'd have been the one that do it. But it's testing their moral strength. And we're taught today that if you want to test your moral strength, then you give yourself some type of moral temptation. And if you can overcome that and stay strong, then you will succeed and you don't have to worry about ever being bad or ever being unfaithful, whatever it may be. This verse tells us that every human being that has ever lived has been and will be tempted by the devil. Everybody. And we'll all be tempted in different ways. Whenever you get real strong in your life in a certain area, certainly we know that the devil comes and tries to tempt you in that area. If he succeeds, he goes about gloating because he's done it. If he doesn't succeed, he's mad, mad and he goes back and regroups and tries to figure out another way to do it, and he'll come back at you again. We're never going to be free of temptation as long as we're alive on this earth. We will be free of it when we get to heaven because there will be no devil there. But until then, we've got to somehow figure out how we're going to live in this day and in this age. All of us have temptations. Now, the younger kids have a different temptation than we do. Jaxie and Brody and Tegan, they are all tempted. Most of theirs comes through disobedience to the parents. You know, you don't really have a lot of things you're tempted with during those years. But being disobedient, being ugly, uh, like not cleaning your room when your room's supposed to be clean, well, that's, that's a temptation. And so many times we just give in to it and we don't clean our rooms, so therefore you've lost that temptation. We all have to figure it out. There are so many different ways to be tempted. As we get older, the temptations become more serious because we begin to learn more things. And as we get invited to do more things in our lives, then the temptation comes even stronger. <laughs> then marriage comes. And with marriage comes another type of temptation. You get out in the workforce, 
another type of temptation. Then later on, when you get older in life, you don't have temptation. I mean, we couldn't do anything if we wanted to, can we? I'm not sure what y'all are thinking about, but I know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> no, unfortunately, we receive temptation in our own ways. A Christian receives temptation of not going to church, <coughs> not reading the Word, not praying, not participating in church activities, not visiting. There, there's, a Christian goes through a lot of temptations. And it's basically the same for all ages when it comes to Christianity. Satan wants to take that away which you think is the most important in your life. And when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, it is not then that we get on a big old boat and we, have a sa we sail on the sea and there's never any waves whatsoever. It's perfect, easy sailing. That is far from the truth. Once you get saved, you step into a boat, and all of a sudden here comes those Eurocritums, as Paul said, that came against him and threatened to destroy every boat and every person on that boat. But if you hang on, you can be saved. So these temptations in life, they're all real. Billy Graham had his temptations. The Billy Bobs of this world, they had their temptations. Jesus had his. He said he was no different than we are, and he knows all the temptations we know because he's been through them. And the great difference was he never gave in. And the truth is, we don't have to either. Amen. Now, I know we noticed this this morning on certain things like that. We, uh, we have the excuses. Well, we, we're just human and we're going to sin. And I, you know, I, can agree, I can agree with that language. But I would tell you another thing. God says we don't have to. And it's because we believe what we want to believe in, that, that we're human and we're going to mess up. That's why we mess up. But when Jesus said to her, go and sin no more, he meant that. Amen. And he meant also that he would give her the ability to live beyond sin, to live above it. Amen. We all have that ability. We just don't seek it. Because we, we have an excuse. I'm human. But God wants us to understand we can say that when we get to heaven, there will be no temptation there, and I can get an amen on that. It's because the devil is not there. But by the same token, we can live above it today because God is here. Amen. We just got to want to. So we're all going to be tempted. And I want you to understand that we will never, ever have victory over any temptation that we have in our life if we keep putting that temptation before us. Now that's a, it's a hard statement. But I'll give you an instance. If we have been someone who has drank in the past alcoholic beverages, you're never going to get over that temptation if you keep a six-pack in the refrigerator. It's common sense, isn't it? <laughs> If you're, a, if you're a smoker and you decide to quit, you're never going to get over it if you keep that pack of cigarettes around just in case. And I've had people tell me that. They say, I don't smoke, but I've got them there just in case. You're never going to get over it. Somewhere or another, you have to put your faith in that thing that you believe in. And if you believe you're going to fall back in there and that's just your, your little crutch, you're going to fall back in there. Amen. Things are going to get rough. You see it all the time on TV. It tickles me. They get on there and they quit smoking and they're living a good life. And the next thing you do, you see them smoking. And the guy says, well, I, th I thought you had quit smoking. I have, but this is a bad thing here and I can't handle it alone. You see where their faith is? It's in that thing, not in God. And they've lost the whole thing about them. If you've had a problem with drugs in the past, you can never, ever get over that temptation if you keep a, if you keep a crack pipe loaded and ready in your drawer somewhere. Amen. You can't do it. It's there in case you need it, in case you want to go back, in case you change your mind. When we step out there with God, we better step out there and leave everything else behind. Old things are passed away. All things become new. And until you believe that and you trust God that way, you will never, ever get over whatever your temptation is. If you've had trouble in the past with porn and you're trying to break that habit and get away from it, You'll never break it 
if you keep an X-rated video inside your DVD, just in case. See, it sounds silly to us, doesn't it? But how many things do we have in our lives that are the same way, the same thing? We've got to somehow reach out and know that God is telling us the truth and that all things are going to work in our lives if we trust him the way that we should. In the book of Romans, he tells us, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Make no provision for the flesh. And what is the flesh? The sinful things of the world, the things that you crave, the things that you desire that are not of God. Make no provisions for them. Because if you make a provision, you're going to go into them. Yeah, thank you. What what are y'all thinking about today? As I talked to you this morning, we were talking about change. It is so true in every one of us, but our problem is because we've made the change already. And we're living in a state of, of limbo, and we're not committed to God like we should. That's why the things of God don't appeal to us. That's why you'd sit here and be quiet in a service like that this morning, because you know God's dealing with you, and you don't want to do anything about it. I wonder how much longer do any of us have to live? After it's all over with, the only thing we're going to be able to do then is say, I wish. I wish I had of. If I'd have only listened. If I'd have only believed it. If I'd only thought that an altar was more important than a meal. If I had only believed. But it's going to be too late then. God's grace is there for every one of us. I firmly believe that. But we are being fooled into believing that we can live like we want to and God's grace is going to cover us. And whoever believes that, you're the biggest fool of all. See, we think God's going to pour out that grace on us and we can live like we want to and you're wrong. God's grace comes to us when we're trying to live for Jesus Christ. Then his grace covers us. But there's not a sinner that's ever been born that God's grace covers them when they're out there living in sin and living it because they want to. And when we're doing things that are wrong with God, no matter what you say, whatever the word says, you better be careful. Because when you do that and then you're out there saying, but God's grace is going to cover me, you better be careful. You better be careful is all i got to say to you. I had much rather be sure and certain than I could be flipping the coins see if I'm going to get heads or tails because that's what you're doing. Be serious about your life. Care about your life. These temptations are real in our lives. But we're never going to overcome them, whatever they are, as long as we do something and allow something to be out there just in case we need to fall back on it. God says, stand up, step out of the boat, and begin to trust me for everything in your life, and I will not fail you. Amen. 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 Now, over these, these temptations that we face in our lives, I guarantee you we can have victory over them. God's already told us that. He's assured us of that. There is a victory. There is a way, and it's waiting on us. You see, temptation, when you come to it, the battleground's in the mind. It's in your mind. Satan, your heart, when you give it to God, that's his. And Satan's trying to take it, but the way he does it is by coming to your mind, showing you something, offering you something, letting you see something you think is better. The idea behind this program was to put them out there with men or women and let those men or women attract their attention so much that they would give themselves into it and commit adultery, and not think anything about it. It's those things that we lust after, the things of the eyes, the things of the flesh. We, we see them, and we want it. Eve lusted after a fruit, because for some moment she thought that fruit would be better than what God was giving her. She had everything made in that garden, everything. But yet she wanted one little thing more because Satan showed her and tried to tell her it was better than what she got now. And there is nothing that we have that is better than what God gives us. Amen. What it, however God made me, I can't make me any better. Think about it. Whatever God's called me to be in my life, I can't be anything better than that. We just got to learn to trust God and believe God's word. We can have victory of the, these temptations that come to us when we fail. God says, I have a way, and I can assure you that I can help you overcome that temptation. 
Now, we get out and we try to do all these plans and we try to do all these programs and we try to do all these things because somebody else has done it before us and it worked for a good time for them, so we think we can do it. But when we're doing that, we're looking to man again for an answer to something that cannot be done by man. It takes God to do it. And God said, if you'll come to me, commit your life to me, I'll show you how to overcome, and I will make sure that you can get it done right. In our minds, we believe certain things in our minds. And if we get enough of it in our minds, then the first thing you know, you're going to do it, and then you're going to start messing this heart up. And that's all that Satan wants. Can you stand true for God? Can you be true to God? Can you lift God up? Can you please God? And the answer is yes, but you have to do it. You have to do it. The truth, but it cost us something. And we're not willing to pay that price. When God The only way that Satan can destroy you or your family is simply to help you see something that God does not want you to have. It's forbidden. Eve saw a tree, and he said, I understand God said, don't eat of that fruit, fruit of that tree. And she said, yeah, we can't eat of it. And he said, why not? And then whatever she says, he just repeated it to her. And God said, if we eat of that tree, we're going to die. You surely shall not die. The first big lie ever told in the Bible. Well, she did. She died spiritually. You see, it's those forbidden things that destroy us. And what's forbidden to me may not be in the same way. You have different tests than I do, different temptations than I do, and then we all have some of the same. But whenever you're willing to listen to Satan and say, I, I just don't think I'll go to church today. Oh, I, I don't think I'll go to prayer Saturday tonight. Oh, I, I don't think I'll do this. I don't think I'll do that. When you begin to entertain his thoughts, he will keep telling you more and more reasons why you don't have to. And if you'll sit there and listen to him, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Mother is all the time saying, Danny, I get these calls on this phone, and I just don't know what to do. I answer them, and they talk to me about all these things, and I don't want none of those things. I, I don't know why they keep, I don't know what to do. I said, mother, hang the phone up. And it's not in my mother's nature to hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> it's not there. Hang the phone up. And if you get smart enough, you'll start recognizing numbers. Don't answer it. See? But we do with Satan. We say, hello. And he starts telling us forbidden things. Hang the phone up. Amen. Get away from it. Flee as fast as you can because he can only offer you something that God says you should not have. He will never offer you anything good. He can't do that. It's not his nature. He can only offer you something that God forbids. Get away from him. Run from him. Whatever you do. Amen. Satan wants you to believe that sin is satisfying. Just try it. You'll like it. Try it. You'll like it. Back when I was growing up as a younger person, one of the biggest sayings back then was, I want to find out for myself. I said, really? If you shoot yourself with that gun, it'll kill you. I want to find out for myself. <laughs> now, they won't play that game. You jump off that bridge and you hit those rocks below, it's going to hurt you. I want to find out for myself. Well, go ahead. That's all Satan does to us. Whenever we, he, he shows us something we should not have, 
It's, it's the same as leaping there because it's going to lead to death. It will lead to death. If you keep following after him, one small thing will lead to another, to another, to another. You don't believe that because you think you can handle it. Well, go for it. But the end is death. No sense even playing with it. And God says, don't. And the devil says, try it. You'll like it. Then you've got to choose who you're going to believe. And if we keep our focus on God, we're going to walk away from those things that are going to hurt us. I, I don't know how we're going to get around it. I really don't. But TV is one of the worst things that we have today in our society. Now be careful of those of you who are amen because you watch it. And those who didn't say anything, they're already guilty, and I know that. <laughs> TV. TV is about nothing except those things that God forbids us to have. The language God forbids us to use. The scenes God forbids us to use. They're nothing but a bunch of... It's, it's just a, if we could just get me TV back. If we could get everything to be Barney. My three sons, Father Knows Best, Gunsmoke in the original version. See, if we could go back to that in our TVs, then I'm telling you what a time we'd have. It, that's what I'm talking about. If we get them back and just be the only, the only choices you have, then you know what some of you do? You would quit watching TV, and that's what God wants, and then you start maybe reading your Bible or maybe go visiting or maybe come to church on Sunday nights. Who knows? You, you never know what will happen whenever you give up something for God. But we've got lulled into it. We don't think it's so bad. We can sit there and watch those programs with all those dirty words in it, all those dirty scenes in it. And you know what we say? Ain't going to affect me because I'm a Christian. Really, it's your mind. And don't tell me that at the, roar, the worst moment in your, in your life, it's not going to sneak out. It's not going to sneak out. And it will. I had an uncle that was as good an uncle as anybody could ever had. He took care of me and David and Greg, and he just, he didn't like Becky, but he took care of us boys. <laughs> and he was all the time giving us something, doing something for us. And, you know, he, he was an amazing man. I never, ever saw him do anything wrong. I never heard him use an ugly word his entire life. But at the end of his life, he had to go into a nursing home. And you'd go out there and see him, and he was the same, same fella until he got near the end. And somehow or another, he started cursing. He'd use bad language. And I tried to figure out where did it come from. I had never heard him my entire life. Where did it come from? How does a person do that? All your life. And then all of a sudden... See, those things you watch, those things you hear, those things that you read that you think has no effect on you whatsoever, you're wrong. Because they get into your mind and they stay there. And little pieces of it will come out at the wrong time. It would be embarrassing for me to know that one day, if I ever went to a nursing home, that I would start doing something like that and my kids had to remember that. Because they've never, ever, never, ever, ever heard me say an ugly word. Not like, I mean, John, that's an ugly word. But if I were to say something, cursing word, it's not there. It's not in my vocabulary. But if I put myself around it, it gets inside there somehow. And the devil's going to cause it to come out. The devil is a liar. And a deceiver. Amen. Always has been. Always will be. Because that's his nature. And we need to be very careful. About those things. That we listen to. That he tempts us with. You watching shows and stuff that are. Filthy and, and all. It may not have any effect on you. It will. But your kids hear it and see it. They see you doing it. So it's okay for them to do it. 
and makes it worse. Can you imagine, listen, can you honestly imagine how bad it's going to be 15 years from now? I shudder to think, I do, what my grandkids are going to grow up with in 15 years from now. What this world is going to be like. What things are going to be permissible. How are they going to survive if we haven't taught them now? And you don't tell them something, you don't teach them by telling them something and you do it anyway. Because they got a whole school out there, a whole world of people around them telling them the wrong thing to do. So you don't teach them that way. But how are they going to survive? Let me ask you another thing. If your child was kidnapped and taken from you, how well would they stand up for Jesus to those who took him from it? If they were kidnapped... And then killed. Would they have been crying out to Jesus in the last moments of their life? Or trying to figure out how to get out of the situation? This is what we teach them. When they get to school and they're tempted to do this and to do that and will taste this and try that. You know. Why are so many of them failing today? They haven't been taught. They haven't been taught. See, we haven't taught to our kids like we should. Because there's a world of temptations in those schools. And they're confronted with it every single day of their life. True faith and happiness is living in victory with Jesus Christ. There is never, ever a momentary pleasure of this world that is worth the lasting pain is going to create. The devil will show you the pleasure, but he never shows you the pain. All he wants to do is deceive you and trick you. In closing, I want to, I want to read something to you. Maybe, Garrett, good to have you back home safely from your trip. He's gone for four months somewhere. But it's good to have him back. Maybe Garrett or Bill can learn this song and maybe sing it for us one day. The song's entitled, I Got My Foot on the Rock. And I want to read you the chorus to begin with. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walked through the lonely valley, though I drank from the bitter cup, when the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easier way, I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air. I look him straight in the eye. I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. That's the course. I started out to win this race, to serve the Lord and to look upon his face. But the way's been long and the way's been rough. But there's one thing for sure. I've got my mind made up. The devil, he will tempt you and fill you with the strife. He'll make you sick in body, even try to take your life. But put your trust in Jesus and say, Lord, I've had enough. The Lord will say, move on, Satan. He's got his mind made up. Now, Job was a man who was tempted in every way. The devil took his family. He lay sick night and day. His wife, she came a saying, curse God, you've had enough. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes a-knocking, showing me an easier way, I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air. I look him straight, and straight in the eyes, and I say, my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. Amen. Amen. Now, that is what every Christian should do in their life. Make your mind up who you're going to serve. But as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. Make your mind up. And then begin to do it. And it'll be the best life you've ever had. And then when you pray those prayer of protection for your children or for your family, you'll know it's going through. Because you've made your mind up to do it God's way. 
And God's going to bless that. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you you can help us to make our minds up. There are so many distracting things in this world. And God, if we're not careful every moment, we're going to slip up. We're going to do something foolish because we will think it's going to bring us joy. But God, there's not one thing out there that the devil can offer us that's worth listening to. God, you've given us the best. Everything we have, those things from you, God, they're the best we can have. So why would we try to listen when the devil lies to us about a better way? Eve listened, she fell. All of us have listened and we've fallen. But God, today we can come back. Today we can make a choice. We can change our lives and we can begin to do it your way all over again. And it doesn't matter how rough it is. God, you said it's going to be rough. But we can stay with you and trust you and get through it because you'll help us. I pray that every person in here will be able to stand strong, lift themselves up, throw their heads back and say, do what you want. But my mind is made up. I'm standing on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And if we do that, what a glorious life we'll have. God, I thank you for this day, for your blessings, for your people. Go with us now and keep us thanking you for everything. In your name we pray, amen and amen.